Now, I would love to show you some visible coincidences between Avatar 1 and Avatar 2. If you look closely, the right arm of Loak was bleeding after the shark attack, but after a couple of frames into the scene, his bleeding was gone. How the hell or not was that possible just within a couple of seconds? It was just a filmmaking mistake. If you look at any creature in Avatar, they all have some sort of breathing holes in some parts of their bodies, and these breathing holes also have been depicted as a weaker part of their body that can be used as a target to tame down or even kill those animals. These creatures had double fins just like the Ekrans have double wings for perfect balance while navigating. Even the helicopters and airships have rotor blades in double for a stabilized ride. This shit is amazing. Also the whale has two neural extensions akin to the last shadow of the Thanator. I have seen something like this in real life. I mean, on the internet. The footage you saw might involve an underwater cave or sinkhole where the freshwater and saltwater layers can create a visible boundary due to differences in their density. This phenomenon is real and the divers can also pass through these layers. We have also seen this thing on Earth. Here we go. The differences in the density is also the reason why the water of the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean never mix. My beautiful daughter. Hi, Ma. How the hell or not, Kiwi managed to talk to Dr. Grace Augustine. Here's the simple answer. She used her cue to connect with Ewa. She looked for the memories of her mom. She selected a specific memory of her mom. She got into that memory and started talking to her. And the amazing thing is that the response from her mom was actually from the consciousness of the last moment of Dr. Grace Augustine. She afterwards tapped into another memory of her mom and started talking, but the reply was also from the final consciousness stage of Dr. Grace Augustine before her last breath. The same thing also occurred among Jake, Natiri, and the son, Nateyam. They both tapped into a specific memory of Nateyam, they communicated with Nateyam, but the response was not from the baby Nateyam, it was from the older Nateyam, whose consciousness was from the final stage of consciousness before his death. I'm happy to see you too. But Jake Sully at first thought it to be a hallucination when he heard of it from Norm Spellman after the seizure of Kiwi. It's like frontal lobe epilepsy. Epilepsy. Yep. You see visions, you get... If you are also wondering why she had a seizure while being involved in that process, this kind of memory overlooking process requires a heavy level of cognitive energy consumption, but she was too sensitive and weak to do that, so she could not hold it together. This is possibly the reason why Dr. Grace Augustine also failed to pass through the eyes of Ewa and come back. She was too weak for that. She is very weak. You see that aurora in the sky? This is a sign that Pandora Moon is surviving from the rays of the sun very well. You can see the same thing here on Earth in the northern and southern hemisphere. The helicopter of Gnome had the same combination of color that the forest and reef people had on their bodies. Coincident? This scene works as a proof that the Navi people not only have bluish colors but also have hairy skin like the human beings. Exactly what was Ronald doing to get back the consciousness of Kiri? She was poking small holes on the back and chest of Kiri using a needle dipped in antidote. She then started sucking out some sort of poisonous substance from the body of Kiri. After a couple of rounds, Kiri came back to consciousness. So, it seems more like Kiri got intoxicated during the seizure while tapping into the memories of her mother. This guy spider always tried to pretend like a Navi, but sometimes in a very cringe way. He could have jumped down on the bridge deck very easily, but nope. He had to jump on the railings. If he just tripped and fell over, he would go straight to the fucking ocean. You see this? No! No! This girl was screaming after being electrocuted, but the other girl was not feeling anything in the previous frame. You know why? Because the tip of the shock device did not get in touch with the chest. 
the hell are you doing? In Avatar 1, Human Lyle killed the Ikran of Nitiri, and in Avatar 2, Avatar Lyle killed the Ilu of Isahik, which is one kind of Ikran for the Reef people. Is that a coincident? This nervous extension of the Payakan is also golden in color, which is akin to the color of Amrita. So, if you have a confusion, I would love to make it crystal that the golden colored nervous extension was never drilled. The Amrita was in a different place compared to the place of the nervous extension of the whale. This physical gesture was also seen in Nitiri in Avatar 1. This gesture is used to signal their own minds to calm down or stay relaxed. Bring it down on the hall! Coming down on Spider was previously seen to be reconning over the throttle and learning about the functions. No wonder why he decided to break the throttle to cause an accident for slowing down the Miles team. Scorsby was running slowly but then he suddenly increased his speed of running just to get a slap on the ass of the girl. Such a gentleman he is, motherfucking pervert. It won't be a surprise if another spider is born because of that perv. There goes out Dwayne Johnson from Ohio. So that's what this is all about. That's it. Amrita. Amrita is not an English word, it's a mythological Hindu word. The actual pronunciation is Amrita, and according to Hindu mythology, Amrita is a golden color liquid which is said to be giving the gods the power of immortality upon drinking it. Many gods and monsters even fought against each other to get that life elixir according to the scriptures of Samudra Manthana. If you remember Avatar 1, the same background score was also playing in two different tragic moments. If you have ever been confused, this is exactly how a whale is hunted by the humans in Avatar 2. They mark the target with a marking missile that has a sharp edge which gets stuck inside the armor of the whale. They throw cocktails over and into the water so that the whales rise up to prevent their echolocation sensors from getting deaf. They use airbag missiles to slow down her movement and hit on the chest of that whale with an explosive harpoon to sabotage the herd. They take away the dead whale and extract the yellow Amrita. They sing the whale afterwards. They uh, target the mother because the calf swims slowly and she won't leave the calf. They usually target the mother because the mother has more of the golden substance than the babies. But the same can be applied to the father whales. In short, they target big whales to make more money, but they also don't hesitate killing baby whales if they get even a single chance. If you take a notice, even the infants in Matkaina were seen to be riding on their ilu. And it really makes sense considering the fact that making an ilu docile is much much easier than the same with an ikran. If you fail to tame down an ikran, you're gonna fall straight to the ground from the tip of the floating mountain. When everyone else was raging at Jake and his family, Sirea was the only Matkaina who was looking frightened. It's because she had a fear that she might lose her boyfriend Loak as well as Jake's whole family to whether the rage of these people or to the hands of the sky people. She really has a caring and loving heart. Destroy you! They would destroy everything that you love! Yeah! When Jake Sully said that thing, the Sahik immediately placed her thumb on her belly, thinking about her baby. The fear of losing her loved ones struck into her mind for a while. The perfect son like you. The perfect little soldier. When Lowak was living for Payakan, he had a small thing in his hand. What the hell was that? It was actually a kind of water bladder that can purify ocean water from dirt, salt, and other harmful substances. As the Matkaina people spend the majority of their day in the ocean, the supply of fresh water is a must, and these small water bladders can come in handy for the people. The crab looking robots had three fingers unlike the UMP ground machines having five fingers and I could not find out any technical advantage of this new design. The only thing that I can speculate is that three fingers look cooler than five fingers as well as they're cheap to design and manufacture. Have you ever wondered why there are double rotor blades rather than one in every rotor case of the ship? They're even moving in opposite directions. Here's the fact, moving in opposite directions for the rotor blades actually helps the ship in three ways. They give the ship stability by taking away any chances of spinning to any inconvenient direction while navigating and praying until Kuhn. The hulls on both sides strengthen the stability even more by making a sharp balance of weight on both directions. They help the ship maneuver to left or right immediately by adjusting the rotation and angle of both wings. While in full force, they give power to the ship to fly above water level, giving them a smooth ride. Also, the ship could fly higher if there were more rotor blades positioned in the same way those helicopters had. 
Ever wondered why the chin of the Elus are that sharp? Their chin is equivalent to the sharp hull of a ship cutting through water for a smooth dive in the ocean. The Ekrans also have the same thing, which helps them cut through air in order to get a smooth ride. That is impressive. How can they be filled half with water and the other half empty? It's mainly because of the airtight condition inside this plant. Let me give you an example. If you place an empty glass upside down into water, the inside portion will still remain empty because it's airtight from the inside and the water molecules are working as a bottle cap. These water molecules together are preventing air from getting outside and water from getting inside. If you tilt the glass, the water molecules will break and the portion of air inside the glass will come out creating a lot of bubbles. If you have understood that science, then you can also imagine this inflated plant as a tilted glass full of air and you can easily make the assumption. Miles Scorch broke the bond with his avatar with an extreme negligence which really confirms how intensely this man used to hate the Navi indigenous people. By the way, if you have confusion about the terms named as Omatikaya, Navi, and Matkaina, let me explain everything in the simplest way possible. When the harpoon missile bounced and hit the interior of the ship, the smoke coming from the rocket also vanished due to the shockwave coming from the blast. This is so amazing of the VFX team to consider this simple law of physics while compositing, unlike the Fast and Furious action scenes where family gets more significance than the law of physics. If you look closely, all the holes of the machine gun were not delivering bullets at the same time. They were firing bullets one by one in a systematic manner just like the usual machine guns to reduce recoil and increase accuracy. It's like quality over quantity. <laughs> If you look closely, the eyes of this guy looked right at first. He saw something coming from the edge of his right eye and then his eyes gave an auto response even without looking at the following direction. There's a reason why James Cameron is considered to be one of the best directors in the history of Hollywood for his intricate level of detailing in the movies. By the way, when Spider was breaking the throttle, this guy over there decided to put his hand on the shoulder of Spider to stop him. Like what the fuck, what did he expect after placing his thumb on the shoulder of a guy who was aggressively breaking the throttle? Like Spider will stop doing what he was doing, take off the pant of this man and start sucking his pedal stick? When the Surak of Jake Sully assaulted on the neck of the Ikran of Miles Scorch, he screamed after the Ikran even though he was not injured physically because of the bite. You know why? Because Miles Scorch can also feel the pain of his Ikran because of the Sahelu. The same thing also happened in the previous chapter when Lyle shot the Ikran of Nitiri and she also screamed even though she was not taking any bullet. 